a locomotive's whistle is the kind of sound everyone's grown accustomed to. The howling sound of a steam locomotive's whistle echoing through the valley is sure to be either a hauntingly beautiful melody of chimes, or a shrill hooting warning of get the hell out of the way. Following dieselization, however, the mournful sound of whistles slowly faded to the blare of air horns. Well, unless you were the New Haven, and some steam locomotives did get horns themselves from time to time. But what about something even louder than both of them combined? Something that could be heard from ridiculously far away? Well, Union Pacific decided to find that answer, going above and beyond, and to ridiculous lengths, as they always love to do, by slapping one of these on their locomotives. What the f*** is that? Well, it's a siren. Yes, that kind of siren. The same type that had warned town folk of impending nuclear war, an incoming tornado, or firefighters that there's a fire in town. The idea is every bit as crazy as it sounds. In the groovy 1970s, Union Pacific was wondering if they could fit locomotives with a device that could more effectively warn track maintenance gangs of the train's presence. Seeing how Union Pacific loves to push the envelope with their motive power, they figured they could take the same sirens already prevalent in towns for civil defense and weather purposes and stick it on top of a locomotive, which in theory, the louder siren sound could travel much further than a horn could. After all, fire trucks on top of their electronic sirens shared on other emergency vehicles also have miniature sirens, namely the Federal Signal Q2, which is probably the most recognizable sound of any fire truck. Well, in the States at least. Elsewhere it varies like the United Kingdom's two-tone horns made famous by Fireman Sam. The siren in question chosen was the Federal Signal Thunderbolt. The Thunderbolt series was produced between 1952 to 1990. They were supercharged electromechanical models that could produce 125 to 130 decibels at 100 feet, with the sound being amplified with the help of a blower. Without it, yeah, they weren't that loud. There were quite a few different models, but the three most prevalent were the 1000, 1000T, and the 1003. The 1000s were the first and loudest batch of the three, being five port single tone. This is also where my channel name comes from. They funny enough used the same motor and chopper assembly found on the Model 2, which amazingly is still in limited production ever since 1917. It's crazy! The 1000T was the same thing, only dual toned, being offered in 4.5 port or 5.6 port, and were not only the most popular, but also the most commonly found. The 1003 was the same thing, only it sported solenoids in two little boxes by the chopper cap, which pushed dampers to cover one or both holes of the chopper to create a variety of signals, such as pulse and high-low. This is the model we'll be focusing on as the solenoids would come in handy. Six locomotives were used in this test program started by Uni Pacific to see what was more effective. Two of them were equipped with the Thunderbolts, being SDP-35's 1400 and 1402. Both would later be moved in 1979 onto DDA-40X's 6924 and 6918. Quite fitting, a big loud siren would be fitted to two of the world's largest diesel locomotives. SD-40-3049 was noted to have an electronic siren fitted to it. However, photos of it sadly don't exist as far as I know, and it's not known what model of siren it was. It could have been a bullhorn or one of those PA speakers, but who knows. SDP-35-1408 was the outlier in the program, 
having additional horns added, making for three horns in total on top, being a Leslie S5T, a Leslie S3T, and a Nathan K5. I can only imagine how ungodly that would have all sounded if they all sounded together. In order for the Thunderbolts to fit on top of the locomotives, a special, more flat projector was mounted in place of the original one, and the siren didn't come with a rotator since, well, it wouldn't need it in this application, nor a blower as it would be supercharged from the locomotive's own air supply to amplify the sound. And since the DD40s sported two air compressors on their two prime movers, that wasn't an issue. The locomotives still retained their conventional horns, however, as according to Union Pacific timetables, they were intended to be sounded for an emergency only when approaching and passing gangs or workmen who have not noticed or heard the horn. They were not intended to be used in cities, towns, municipalities, or at grade crossings, except in emergencies. Because, yeah, loud. For those curious on how they sounded, there's no footage of them going off on any of the UP units, however these clips should give you an idea on how they sounded. So, did they work? Eh. Reports seem to be inconclusive, as very little documentation on these things exist. We're lucky we even have the photos we got of these things. Some reports stated that the sirens violently rattled the cab when sounding, others said the chopper would spin slowly at speed, but the general consensus seems to be that the regular horns were already loud enough to warn people of the train's presence and that the sirens were pretty much overkill. As a result, by 1980, the Centennials were put into storage, with the 1003s being removed off 6918 and 6924, presumably scrapped by 1984, as well as the units themselves being scrapped the following year. The SDP-35s involved in the program were also scrapped. 3049, however, survived, and is now in operation on the Wheeling and Lake Erie Railroad, rebuilt as an SD40-3. It has since lost its electronic siren after the test program concluded. While the actual Thunderbolts mounted on the locomotives are gone, there's still a good chunk of Thunderbolts of different models still out there. A majority of them are still active, mainly out in the Midwest as tornado and fire sirens, while others sadly sit abandoned on their poles for varying reasons. Some are in private possession of enthusiasts or museums, but a good majority originally installed during the Cold War were removed or replaced with modern sirens, namely ones that sport battery backup. Nevertheless, they can still be found. Locomotives today, however, still rely on traditional horns to warn people of their presence. Rail fan with a YouTube channel name of a siren talking about sirens on trains. Surprise it took me this long to make a video on such a topic combining such interests. Now you know where my channel name comes from, huh? A special thanks goes to those who submitted footage for the making of this video. It's been more than 10 years since I've heard a Thunderbolt in person, sadly. But maybe one day that'll change. They did bring back one of the Civil Defense era Thunderbolt 1000s in Reading to be intended to be sounded off every 9-11, but people freaked out about it and now it's silent again. As always, thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time.